Hey everybody, this is John for Pioneer Nexus MTG coming at you with a quick top five deck list to start out January 2023 as we are officially into the new year. And if you like these informative Pioneer videos, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving us a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below. So before we get into the top five, I would like to talk about a couple of decks that are just outside the top five and could easily replace one or two of the decks that we'll talk about here in a minute. And those would be Mono and Humans, is it Phoenix and Abzan Grease Fang? Now, all of these decks have been in the top five lists that we've done over the months for 2022. They just happen to have fallen out of favor a little bit. Uh, Mono White Humans obviously kind of getting hated out a little bit. But obviously, the presence of things like Rakdos and things like Gruel Aggro or Gruel Midrange, while also being a little bit soft to something like Selesnya Angels that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, is it Phoenix? is a very much a mid-range deck that does struggle into decks like Rakdos a little bit and specifically blue-white control. And then finally, obviously, Grease Fang. A lot of it depends on the amount of graveyard hate you're packing or opponents are packing and um, how many, uh, how lucky you are with your draws a little bit. It is very much the RNGesus deck of the format um, to a certain extent and does have a decent mid-range game plan. Both the Abzian and the Esper variants I've been very impressed with, especially playing them in Explore. I tend to play them a little bit more in best of one, so I'm a little bit more skewed to the nut draw potential of the decks. But those decks are something to keep an eye on in the format and could easily be in your top five while they are not in mine. So taking a look at the format in reverse, obviously Rakdos. Um, this deck is and has been the pe best deck in the format for quite some time. Um, really only competing with Mono Green for that number one spot. Uh, why is it good? Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, Efficient Creatures, Disruption, Fable the Mirror Breaker, Shoulder to the Top End, Clean Mana Base, Utility Lands, you name it, the deck does it. Um, it's very good in the creature-based decks. Um, not only in the main deck when you have access to you know Fatal Push and Power Word Kill and Bone Crusher Giant and Dread Boar, then you get to add things like uh, Meat Hook Massacre, Extinction Event, and Post Board Games. Kind of getting to play this going up slightly bigger control route. While still playing things like Blood Tithe Harvester that can be both a removal spell and pressure. Bone Crusher Giant, Fable the Mirror Breaker, all these different things. Well, this particular list in front of me isn't necessarily reflective of all of the changes of Rakdos. There are some interesting things to note with this list. Go Blank being in the main deck, Duress being in the main deck, this version being a little bit more built towards beating maybe mid-range and control decks um, and having a ton of control elements in the sideboard with things like Meat Hook, Massacre, Extinction Event. Uh, the version that I tend to play both in Explore and the... Uh, Pioneer format tends to be very heavy on, very influenced by misplaced ginger, so you're going to see a little bit more, a um, little bit less hand disruption in the main deck, a little bit more utility creatures like Graveyard Trespasser, and you're going to have a lot of utility in the things on the sideboard that you see in this list, but still playing a little bit more of a balanced game. Maybe it's a little bit weaker to the go over the top decks, like your um, Enigmatic Fires decks, your Karuga Fires decks, Mono Green. I think the matchup is getting closer and closer. I still think green is slightly favored, but as a Rakdos pilot gets more experienced and tunes their deck a little bit, I do think it is a very winnable matchup and that kind of is 50-50 at this point. The other boogeyman of the format, uh, Mono Green, has gotten some new tools recently. Um, a lot of things out of Brothers War, uh, Might and Meek Stone, replacing a lot of the things you might see Sky Sovereign in the main deck. You're still seeing a lot of these variants running Teferi who slows the sunset, obviously making the combo just that tiny bit easier in the mid-range uh, meta sometimes if you're playing against a lot of Enigmatic Fires decks or a lot of um, uh, Karuga Fires lists or just Monograde Mirrors. It's nice to have this way just kind of combo out and not necessarily have to establish your thing. Uh, beyond that, you know, early acceleration with Elvish Mystic and Lane of War Elves and Wolf Willow Haven. Uh, into Cure, obviously Old Growth Troll and Cavalier Thorns kind of leading the beatdown crew. Karn just being the awesome uh, tutor effect that it is, basically means you never have to sideboard. And Storm of the Festival just gives you multiple copies of everything in your deck, while being this kind of go-over-the-top card that allows the deck to be very powerful and really take advantage of the Nykthos and all the green pips in the deck. As far as the sideboard, now there's a lot of new recent tools. Um, Woodcolor Automaton, eh, 
isn't really the best, but is a card you can play. Um, one card that is kind of newer to the thing is City Skype Leveler. This is basically a replaced Meteor Golem. Um, it has both a cast and attack effect, um, which allows you to destroy things. You can unearth and obviously do it again. And after you unearth, you can refetch it up with Karn. This one's a little bit more reusable than Meteor Golem, but does help to answer a lot of problematic things. Obviously, another new one, the Stone Brain. This allows you to deal with you know things like a Grease Fang or whatever if your opponent's deck is relying upon one key card. Um, this is kind of a slow way to deal with that, but it can win you the game in some spots. The rest of these cards we've all kind of seen before. Transmogrifying Wand is kind of a removal spell. Pestilent card, Cauldron, kind of the center of all the different infinite combos with this deck. Uh, Asika's Chariot, obviously very powerful. Uh, one card I'm kind of surprised not to see. Oh, I guess we are. Sky Sovereign. Um, this is a card that has snuck sometimes in the main deck. As one of the weaknesses this deck does tend to have is against more aggressive base decks. Um, obviously they can kind of disrupt you as after they've set up their pressure and then kind of kill you quickly tack down your planeswalkers and you don't only ever really get a chance to leverage that said sometimes in those matchups they can hit a lucky storm in the festival stabilize the board and kind of go off from there but you know you want to beat this deck generally it is disruption plus pressure so you know decks like mono white humans with things like redain out of the sideboard or various spirits builds um, Rectos has to do something very similar. They have to pair their disruption of thought seizes and stuff with early pressure, killing their one or two key creatures. Uh, Misery Shadow is ironically a card that's helped swing that matchup, as well as Shieldred. Uh, Misery Shadow makes it so that whenever you kill their old growth trolls and cavaliers, they get exiled. And then Shieldred, if you kind of get in this weird kind of stall state, um, this deck doesn't gain a ton of life other than the Pestilent Cauldron uh, thing. So if your opponent's drawing cards, you know, they're taking some damage. And obviously it's a card that can attack through a lot of what they have going on. Um, one other key card from the mono green side is Sky Sovereign, as it can kill almost everything in the Rakdos base deck. Um, and when this deck is trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rakdos, generally you start to see Sky Sovereigns in the main deck and such. But in this version, obviously you don't see that. Um, Weakness is the deck we've already kind of talked about. The kind of... Go under you aggressive decks, you know, things like Mono Red, Mono White, Mono Blue Spirits, Bant Spirits. Uh, these decks that are just disruption and pressure um, can often set up before Mono Green does. That said, they have a very narrow window to close that game before Mono Green starts doing Mono Green things. And there are other decks that can compete with it power for power. Uh, some draws of Angels can kind of overpower what it does, um, especially if you can't get the infinite combo online. Um, some of the draws out of the various fires decks, like Kruga fires, especially if they're on like the Cavalier of Thorns build or Cavalier of Flame build, and Kenny can threaten to kill quite quickly on turn five. So there are things that compete with Mono Green, and it is very much a known quantity, and a lot of people know how to play against it. So it's a little bit weaker of a choice than even something like Rakdos, as it's kind of very simplistic in its game plan. So it's very easy to pick apart, but still probably the number two deck overall in the format. Deck number three is Gruel Vehicles. Now this is a deck that has gone through a lot of iteration changes, but the core of it remains the same. You are in a Sika's Chariot and Sky Sovereign deck that allows you to compete with Rakdos, and then you play a bunch of Acrylon Wars or Threaten Effects out of the sideboard, which allow you to uh, take Mono Green's big creature and beat them to death with it. Uh, some of the more recent innovations are adding Werewolf Pack Leader, uh, to the deck to allow you to have a little bit more aggression against decks like blue white control and such um, just where you need this press early pressure if your opponents like disrupting your mana dorks or if you don't happen to draw your mana dorks gives you a little bit of a thing uh, this was a slot that was previously occupied by things like scavenging news um, another new addition to the deck is obliterating bolt this kind of replaces the lava coil strangle uh, things allows you to have removal for various creatures um, obviously doesn't kill Shieldred, but does kill a lot of other problematic creatures. So, and the fact that it can also deal damage to Planeswalkers is quite nice. The fact that it's a sorcery speed, somewhat relevant. But this deck is mostly a sorcery speed deck anyway. You're not really playing many instants. You're not really doing much with utility with your mana during your opponent's end step and such. So, not as punishing, but, you know, would be nice if this was an instant. The rest of the deck, you know, pretty similar. You know, the nut draws obviously of... Mana Dork into Reckless Stormseeker into a Seeker's Chariot can threaten to close out the game quite quickly. But overall, this is just a mid-range deck mainly designed to fight against Rakdos 
and mono green and can also compete against the other uh, various aggressive decks just by having a little bit of removal and being able to go to the top of it. Um, it can struggle against really, really go wide decks like elves or humans sometimes, just simply because, you know, this is much like Rakdos. This is a deck that goes wide, but doesn't play quite as much removal as a deck like Rakdos. A lot of different things on the sideboard. You're seeing a lot of hard hitting things like Ember Cleaves, Hazarets, Running Volleys, etc. Uh, Damning Sphere for something like Lotus Field Combo, which is another deck and certainly give it fits. I'm licensed Hurst, recognizing that the Grease Fang matchup's a little bit slow. Um, this deck doesn't quite fight the format overall quite as good as Rakdos does, but is doing a lot of the same things Rakdos is doing while having a little bit of an edge in the mirror match or mid-range mirror match due to the sheer amount of vehicles the deck runs. Um, has led to Rakdos adopting things like a braid out of the sideboard to help in these matchups. But overall, this is a deck that is worthy of being top five in the format, even if it is not quite as good as Rakdos. Number four, it's just the deck that never dies blue eye control uh, this deck can be reasonable in a creature based decks can be reasonable in a especially game one tends to have a fairly reasonable matchup against something like is it phoenix can be a little bit soft to something like mono green especially if you can't answer them step for step for step um, and it gives you very little margin for error with a lot of what goes on especially in that matchup that said, it does have some terrific, terrific catch-up mechanics. Things like Farewell can deal with a lot of problematic things. Uh, temporary Lockdown is a newer tool to the newer-ish tool to the deck. It helps against the faster aggressive decks like Humans and Spirits sometimes. Um, the rest of the deck, just the good old-fashioned. You, know, you have things like Soul Partition, Fateful Absence, uh, Temporary Lockdown to help deal with creatures. You play a bunch of cheap counter spells, things like Sensor, Jawari, Disruption, Make Disappear. You get to play Absorb, then you pull eventually pull ahead with things like Memory Deluge, Behold the Beyond, Behold the Multiverse, Teferi, and then close out the game with the Wandering Emperor and Shark Typhoon tokens, as well as Hall of the Storm Giants in a pinch. And then, you know, March of Otherworldly Light helps to round out the utility. And then you get to play all these different sweepers now. You know, it's one of the advantages of blue-white control over some of the other options. They have better sweepers at the cost of slightly worse removal. Sideboard, just a hod podge of different things. You have a bunch of big dumb idiots with Bane Slayer, Angel, and Leer helping against the various aggressive decks. Hallbreaker, Horror helping in the control mirrors. Dream Troller can be an absolute house against something like Rakdos. Or in racing situations against aggressive decks. And then, obviously, things like Ether Gust against Mono Green. This deck is in a reasonable place overall in the meta, but it is a deck you constantly have to tweak to know the meta because you know you are fighting against a different bunch of different axes, and sometimes control struggles when it's pulled in multiple different directions. A newer surprising rise is Selesnia Angels. Now this is a deck that is unique. This used to be considered kind of the aggro killer of the aggro decks. It's a deck that theoretically wants to gain a bunch of life. It wants to put some bodies on the field. Um, its real struggle is the fact that it does not have a consistent one drop that is powerful. You have one drops. You have like the one drop clerk that gains life whenever creatures into the battlefield. You have the one drop with lifelink. You have some people run Shaper's Sanctuary in the main deck. Uh, this particular version is running a portable hull. It's really the biggest hiccup with the deck is the lack of powerful one drops uh the two and three drop slot are crammed you have youthful valkyrie bishop of wings giada uh, now tomic which is decent against something like lotus field combo you have all these powerful two drops and then obviously the three drops skyclave apparition is a removal spell resplendent angel and righteous valkyrie valkyrie gains you some life resplendent angel turns all your life gain into a bunch of stuff or a bunch of other angels Kind of threatens to take over the game, and your you can learn, opponent can literally untap with like one angel and then kill you out of nowhere. Just from like, say they untap with a righteous Valkyrie, uh, end step play collected company, uh, hit two angels, untap, play a Kaya's restor restoration, or Kalia's restoration, and all of a sudden, you know, they went from like 12 life to 40 some life, have two angel tokens coming into play, gaining them even more life. All of a sudden, their creatures get plus four, plus four, and you're just like, how do I compete with this? Even a deck like Rakdos, which normally does a very good job of keeping creature decks under control, can have some struggles when they have the, the really kind of 
chain off draws that they can sometimes have. Uh, obviously, newer tool of the deck, Kalia's Restoration. This is a slightly worse version of Collected Company. Um, you look at the top seven cards, put up to X artifact or creature cards with mana value three or less among them on the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of any order. So in the later game, you can sometimes hit three or four. Um, you know, if you happen to get lucky and have a bunch of angels in that spot, you can all of a sudden put, you know, three or four angels in the play and just kind of overwhelm your opponent. But overall, this deck is kind of a very known quantity, um, but has recently been considered less of a joke as there's been some recent finishes with the deck and people are actually working and tuning on the deck and realizing that, you know, some people that play, play best of one have realized for quite some time, this deck's actually quite good and can, can compete with Rakdos, can compete with Mono Green to a certain degree. Very good against the other, other aggressive decks, you know, Spirits, Humans, etc. Tends to struggle against a deck with a bunch of sweeps, sweepers, or decks that just don't care what it's doing. Something like Lotus Field Combo, hence why you're seeing things like Tomic in, in the main deck sometimes. Um, but overall, a deck that has been quietly gaining some traction in the format and once again has risen up kind of like decks like Grease Fang, Mono White Humans that kind of rose up the format and now those decks have kind of tumbled back a little bit. This deck has taken its place as one of the top five decks in the format but could easily get swept aside by one of those other options that we were just talking about as honorable mentions. And just want to say again, happy 2023. I want to thank everybody for the huge growth on the channel last year as we went from basically zero subscribers to monetized in about six or seven months, which is pretty impressive. And there will be some new things coming to the format. Um, I will be doing some other gameplay besides Lotus Field Combo. Um, so be on the lookout for that and a whole bunch of other stuff I have in, hopefully in store for 2022 or 2023. And hopefully you all will be along for the ride. This has been John for Pioneer Nexus MTG.